What's up and welcome back to Tech Lab. If you've been following the channel, you'd have seen that we've been working on a super budget gaming PC. We originally started with an AMD A series processor, and then on our last video, we upgraded to a Ryzen APU. But you guys have been asking what would have happened if we'd have actually paired the A series processor with a graphics card? Would it have made any difference? And is it actually worth doing? So we've managed to dig the processor back out and pick up a graphics card. Now there's no point using any of the new modern graphics cards, if we can even get them anyway, because they're far too expensive for this kind of tier machine, as well as pretty much straight away giving us a super bottleneck on the processor. So we searched around and we managed to find out something which we think would be suitable, which is this. Now we're gonna pair this graphics card with this processor and see if we can answer your question. Now, if you're an avid follower of the channel, you will remember this graphics card from videos such as I added RGB lighting to a graphics card, as well as we just doing a guide on how to change the thermal paste on a graphics card. This is our lab's trusty AMD Radeon RX 560. When it was released, it was considered a budget graphics card and it still is today, even though the prices have changed quite dramatically. When we bought this, it was before the actual GPU problems, and we managed to pick it up for £60 second hand. And that was actually a bargain because this is one of the four gigabyte version fours from Gigabyte. And it's actually not been a bad graphics card all round. I've used this in our editing machine and it works pretty well for even some of the more modern games. And considering we're still looking at the budget range, these will now actually set you back nearly double that price. I've seen these going on eBay for around 120 to 150 pounds, although you can sometimes get one from somewhere like CEX, which then they do come with a bit of warranty for about 145, particularly for the four gig version. Now I thought the four gig version would be better, make better sense because a lot of games actually require more memory now than the two gig variant that you can also get. So to answer your question and see if these actually will make a difference when paired together, or if the processor itself is a fundamental bottleneck for this setup, we decided to put them together, rerun our benchmarks and see what they would do. So as you can see from the benchmark results, you can actually get a big change in difference. This processor has still got some more life in it when you actually pair it with a graphics card of this caliber. But what you do see is in some of the more modern games, particularly the World War Z that we did test, when you start hitting those higher settings, it makes no difference at all. And that's because the processor, when you start really using the medium and high settings, is pretty much at maximum that it can do. Now, 
What this tells us is that adding the graphics card for graphics intense games will actually make a significant difference. But when the game is actually CPU bound, it's not going to change much at all. But if you're not into playing those games and you are still playing some of the older generation games or in particular some of the indie games, it would actually make a substantial change for you. So I hope this video has helped you understand what would happen if you added a graphics card to this processor. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this going forward. Drop us a like if you like this demonstration and I'll see you again soon.